The rangeland analysis platform's vegetation cover dataset provides a powerful view of vegetation patterns across western rangelands over nearly four decades. This data can help us to evaluate how invasive annual grasses and tree cover are changing through time and evaluate the effects on vegetation as a result of management or disturbance. Having a basic understanding and intuition about how these maps are created can help you to get the most out of the RAP web application. So let's go. When you go to rangelands.app and open up the vegetation cover data set, you'll see five vegetation classes, perennial forbs and grasses, annual forbs and grasses, shrubs, trees, and bare ground. But the question we seek to answer with this video is where do these data sets come from? In this case, we use an observation model. This is as opposed to a process-based model, which we use for the rangeland production data set, which you can learn about in a separate short video linked up top. An observation-based model. You may be asking, what types of observations are we talking about? Well, in this case, we're talking about two types of observations. First is satellite data, and the second is field vegetation data. And these are both tied together by cloud computing. Okay, let's look at both of these data sets and the cloud computing in slightly more detail. We'll start off at a high level, looking at the satellite data. Our satellite data come from the Landsat program, which is a joint program between the US Geological Survey and NASA, and has been surveying the Earth for more than 36 years. It covers the globe every 16 days, and you can see what these coverages look like on day one and day 15 of any cycle. It's been doing this for 36 years, and that's a lot of images. In fact, last September, they surpassed 9 million images in the Landsat archive. Landsat is considered a moderately high resolution satellite. It's 30 meters spatial resolution, which means that each pixel in the image equates to 30 by 30 meters on the ground, which is roughly the size of a baseball diamond. Landsat offers powerful data, but at the same time, it doesn't tell us about the vegetation types that are on the ground. And for that, we need field data. Our field data come from two sources, the Bureau of Land Management's Assessment Inventory and Monitoring Program, and the Natural Resources Conservation Service's National Resources Inventory Dataset. Collectively, these two programs go back to 2004, and in that time they've collected more than 60,000 plots that can tell us about the types of vegetation that are on the ground in those locations. 60,000 plots and 9 million images is a lot of data to process, and for that reason, we rely on our partners at Google, who produce the Google Earth Engine, which helps us to process all of that data. So now that we have some understanding of the types of data going into the vegetation cover data set, how do we produce the data set at a high level? Well, from the field data, we take observations of our vegetation classes of interest for each plot in the data set, and then for our satellite data, we take images from six different times of the year that can relate to different phenological patterns, so we can see how plants look throughout the year. Landsat measures seven different types of reflectance as well. And finally, we throw in spatial location variable because we know how much rangelands vary across the Western US. We take all of this data and use a machine learning algorithm, which finds patterns between the vegetation data on the ground and the satellite data from the Landsat program. Based on the relationships between those two data sets, the machine learning algorithm produces a model that makes explicit those relationships between the satellite data and the field data. Then we can take that model and apply it to all of the Landsat data going back to 1984, before we even had field data, to produce the maps of vegetation cover we're interested in. Annual forbs and grasses, perennial forbs and grasses, shrubs, trees, and bare ground. And we don't just do this for one point in time, Rather, we produce it for every year going back to 1984. Thank you for joining me for this video on the vegetation cover data set in the wrap. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the YouTube discussion below and check the description for more information about the vegetation cover data set. Thanks again and see you next time.